G'day guys, in my last video we looked at this Lumix 35 to 100 zoom and how I got it balanced and working on the X5. Today I'm very excited to share with you this monster, the Lumix 45 to 150, a genuine 150mm focal length, working and balanced on the X5 and ultimately flying on the Inspire. Right out of the box, the lens doesn't quite fit the X5. It's ever so slightly too wide, and we're talking probably one millimeter or less. So I went hunting for a little bit of space to see what I could do to, um, to get it to work. And the first thing I found was this little cover plate on the right hand side. Now it's normally held on by two 1.5 millimeter Allen key screws. So you remove them two screws and the cover comes right off. Once you're inside, there's this little piece of plastic and it acts as a fiber optic duct basically just to bring the light from this little LED down in here forward to the front surface so you can see it better it's held on by two little um, two little Phillips head screws and if you remove them the little bit of clear plastic comes out as well and effectively we gain about two or three millimeters plenty enough to get the lens to mount so if we put him in now you see it just fits, literally touches the side as it goes in. And as we turn it, the little red dot just scrapes in. But it does mount, it clicks, and it clears. And you'll see there's just a little bit of room there. And absolutely no room left on the left hand side. Now of course the next thing is getting this balanced. It's extremely front heavy and the lens weighs about 200 grams. Now if we compare that to the stock DJI or Lumix 15mm lens that the Inspire often comes with, uh, it's only 115 grams. Not to mention the fact that when we extend this to the full 150mm focal length, we're working with a huge moment. So even the slightest bit of increased weight out here is going to, um, is going to account for a huge amount of counterweight at the back. So next we'll run through how to make a counterweight. Now this proved a lot trickier than I thought. Um, the biggest issue is that there's bugger all room back here. We're dealing with next to no room behind that gimbal and we've got to fit in a weight behind there to, um, to balance out this entire load at the front. So I'll run through that next and show you guys how to make it. So for my counterweight, I wanted it to, um, to have a half moon shape to sort of fit the way the gimbal swings. So what I did was I got an old can and I lopped the bottom off it and stuck it on the stove top and then started smeltering down lead in the uh, in the bottom of the can. I smelted enough lead to fill the bottom of the can level. And once I took the ingot out, I cut it into three pieces. This is the right hand piece. I ended up using the middle section. So what I was left with was this little half moon section. Now that on its own still isn't finished. I needed to um, I need to add a chamfer on this side and a large chamfer on this side to clear parts of the gimbal. I'll show you that in a minute. And also I had to take a little bit off the front and the back to, um, to make sure it could swing through clearly. Now in my last video I showed I was using um, 3M dual lock on the back to attach the weight to the back of the gimbal. 3M dual lock's just too thick. It, together the two pieces end up being about three millimeters and that's just too much We're really struggling for room to get this weight on the back and make it clear the gimbal So I've used another 3m product. It's um, it's like a removable photo frame hanging um, Velcro stuff. It's, it's similar to dual lock just not quite as thick not quite as strong, but it doesn't have to be So I'll, I'll put up the details of that in the description Use some of that much thinner and it gives us a bit more room Okay, so here's where we're going to attach the lead weight I'll line up the edges of it as best I can and snap the velcro together. You'll notice that it only just clears. You'll see there's literally millimeters to spare as it goes around and if I show you the side profile you'll see why I started with that um, the base of the coat can to get that half moon shape. So absolutely bugger all clearance in there but it does fit just and it holds on quite nicely. Now the lens also needs to be balanced in roll. We're not quite finished yet, so we've got the um, we've got the pitch sorted out, nice and balanced there. But we still have to sort out this roll axis. 
I was rushing a bit when I made my roll counterbalance. It's not as pretty as it probably should be, but simply smelted down some lead in the base of a Coke can using the same process as the rear weight, slapped some dual lock on the back, and it clips on nicely. Now it came in at 50 grams. That was the right amount to balance this in roll. Realistically, if I was making it again, I'd probably I'd probably make it a smaller radius and a little bit longer, and that probably would allow me to use less lead, given that uh, given that the moment would have been longer, so the whole weight could have been smaller. I'll check that out next time. But as you can see, it's balanced in roll, and it's balanced in pitch there also. So here's the beast sitting on the Inspire, perfectly statically balanced. Let's turn it on and see how the gimbal handles it. No problems at all. So here's the lens up and running, and the first thing I notice is that there's an issue with the autofocus. Now if we tap, it does try and focus. It actually drives the focus motor forward and aft, but it just doesn't quite grab, and then it pops up with this message that says, cannot detect camera lens. Now that's obviously a compatibility issue between the lens and the camera, and I wouldn't be holding my breath for DJI to race out and make this lens compatible. But that said, if we swap over to manual focus, and give the slider a slide, the manual focus works beautifully and in fact it's very very fine you're able to really hone in that focus and it works perfectly okay and the cam and the photos save out fine so in total we ended up with a 200 gram lens a 105 gram counterweight on the back and a 50 gram counterweight on the roll all that put together with the weight of the gimbal the entire payload comes out to 750 grams so it is heavy and that compares to about 510 grams of the stock uh, gimbal setup with the DJI or Lumix 15mm. So we're coming in about 230-240 grams over what you'd expect the Inspire to normally lift. And that is quite a lot. That said, I took it for a test flight with the TB48 on a cold winter morning. And I took it up. I wasn't throwing it around very much but I certainly wasn't hovering and when I landed at 30% I still got 11 minutes out of it and that even surprises me because with the general setup I expect about 11 minutes anyway so it's not not overly noticeable in flight time certainly knocks a minute or two off but absolutely incredible lens 150 millimeters and the thing definitely works so the hardest thing was getting this thing balanced and creating that weight what I'm going to do for you guys is anyone who wants a counterweight for the back, I'm going to cast a mould out of, out of plaster or whatever else I can work out. If you send me a photo of your lens that you've actually purchased, I'll, um, I'll recast this mould so that you don't have to go through the mucking around that I did to make the counterbalance for the, um, for the rear. And then if you send me the address, I'll, I'll flick it through with just some postage tacked on it. So, hope you enjoyed the video and hope you enjoy the lens.